Yo, what is up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got another review on the flashback Gareth Bale. We're going to go through the card of Zito stats, clips, and summary, as well as the SPC requirements for you guys to get your hands on him. Before we get into all of that, if I could ask you guys to please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you know when I upload, and comment down below if you're going to be doing this card. And now, let's get into the video. So, guys, this is a team that I used Gareth Bale, and I played him in that white spot in the 4 3 1. I also tried him in the cam and in the striker spot. And overall, guys, my first impressions of this card is. This card is okay. Uh, I think this card has some serious flaws, and we will, of course, get into those. But I think this card was just okay, guys. And we will look at that more in relation to the price of the SPC as well and who he compares to further on in this review. Let's just get into the card himself, though. Gareth Bale, six foot one, medium, medium work pace, left footed, four star single, three star refit, 11 games played, six goals scored, and two assists. Now, guys, for me, 6 1 isn't a bad height for a winger. You do get some good tall wingers like Kulusevsky uh, or someone like Ismail Assar. His medium medium work rates are a bit of an issue. He is a little bit lazy in terms of movement, especially when you need those runs down the wing. He doesn't always naturally make them. And even if you do have the instructions on him, he does sometimes not make those runs as easily as you would like him to. The four-star moves is nice, but the three-star weak foot is also a bit of a con. Uh, he did miss a few chances for me with that right foot as well. So it's something to bear in mind as well. In terms of the chemistry style, guys, initially i did put an engine on him and i thought that would suit him well but actually guys what i ended up sticking with was the artist because of the flaws in his card which we'll get into just now which brings me into the pros of the card the pros of the card very quick uh off the mark guys not super quick but very quick decent decent pace um decent long shots and shot power decent passing as well actually uh decent dribbling not amazing dribbling there are some cons in there for sure and decent physicality as well so overall guys i think this card is has a very good well-rounded skill set but in what you're getting in terms of value for coin especially with those spc requirements which we will just get into uh, i do feel like this gareth bill could have been priced a little bit better in terms of the cons his agility and reactions are a big one guys because he's so big as well uh you do really notice this a little more and his dribbling is only 88 as well so guys you really do need to focus on boosting his dribbling too which is what i ended up doing with the artist chemistry style i do feel like though if you do leave that his finishing is quite poor as well and you'll see a number of shots where he did actually miss quite easy chances for me too i do feel like his finishing is lower than what he suggests on the card there also guys although he has gareth bills of course body type and animations he doesn't quite have the physicality that you would expect of a gareth bill card in, in terms of strength uh, i would have liked him to be a bit stronger on the wing compared to those fullbacks but uh, again still reasonable enough to compete with most players in terms of the player traits guys he's got the long throw and the injury prone trait long shot taker speed dribbler outside the fish shot and the chip shot so all traits that you love to see in a winger i uh, would have liked the finesse shot trait as well guys i do love a finesse shot trait but this card more for striking the ball clean with power strikes so i understand that as well uh, and now that we've covered that let's get into what the svc requirements are for you guys to get your hands on it so guys, getting into some of Gareth Bale's SPC requirements here, and what you guys are seeing here, 300k for the PlayStation, 286 for the Xbox, and 348 for the PC. Now guys, the bottom two squads are fairly easy to do. They are an 83 squad with one player from Spurs, an 84 squad with an informed player and one player from the Premier League. The other two are a little more expensive. But again guys, I don't feel like this SPC is crazy high value. Um, it just depends really on how you value this card. I actually think this is too high for the for the quality of card that you're getting. Um, I do feel like this card did struggle for me a little bit, and it needs to be a little bit lower for it to be worth it. An 86 rated squad on the last one there with an informed player, and an 85 rated squad with an informed player. The one player from Real Madrid as well. So guys, overall not too expensive on any of these squads, but put together they do add up, uh, and it is quite a sizable fee. Uh, now that we've covered that though, let's get into some of the clips that I got within. So guys, getting to some of Gareth Bale's clips, and what you guys are going to see is his general ability off that right wing to play that winger role, also playing in that can spot, and also playing that striker, and just seeing his general attack and play and how he fared in those roles. Now the first thing I want to get into guys is the obvious factor about Bale, his pace. Now his pace is tremendous. Uh, it's not at the top top level but what it is guys is it's very physical in that he's so big but he is so fast as well and that really does allow you to take advantage of that size by being so quick as well and using that against other players it is slightly offset by his physical stats but we'll get into that shortly as well the next thing i want to get into guys is his dribbling now his dribbling is decent you guys will see that he uh, is able to move around quite well and is able to create chances quite well but uh, he did struggle a little bit just in terms of being able to move quickly, particularly down to the agility and the reactions that he has, which I guess to an extent, guys, does hold him back uh, from hold you back rather from being able to boost the real elements this card you want to be able to boost. However, guys, uh, I would say that the right chemistry style is better focused on his dribbling than on anything else because I do feel like his dribbling uh, was something that needs to be better 
and as a Gareth Bale card, it should be better as well. The next thing I'm going to get into, actually, guys, was a surprising part of this card, which was his passing. Um, his passing was very good, very capable, and what he was able to do on the ball in terms of crossing, passing, all that good stuff meant that I was able to create a lot of chances for uh, the other players around him. And generally, guys, that led to a lot of goal scoring opportunities, that led to a lot of uh, assist chances for him, not necessarily put away. But overall, guys, I feel like he did really well in that regard as well. So I feel like his passing was a real pro of this card. Now in terms of his physicality guys, now there's a catch 22 with this in that he is so big and strong and capable but at the same time his strength and aggression levels aren't that high so he does feel a little weaker than maybe a Gareth Bale card should. A Gareth Bale card you're used to being so super physical in terms of capability and this card was lacking a little bit in that uh, in that he wasn't able to really fight against the bigger fullbacks and you had to use that pace a little more and burst away from the defenders a little more rather than just brute force past them as well. The final thing I want to get into, guys, before we get into some other factors, is his shooting. Now, his shooting, as you guys will have noticed from a bunch of these clips, is actually quite poor. Now, I use the finesse shot a lot, and what I figured out, guys, with this card is that you can't use the finesse shot. You have to use the power strike on this card. He does, of course, only have three star weak foot as well, so that plays into the fact that you have to keep his shooting relatively simple and straightforward in terms of finishing. The other problem I had, guys, was that because he's decent at long shots, but he struggles a little bit to create space because of his uh, slightly stiff dribbling, it's difficult to get these long shots off. Uh, and generally, guys, he would miss easy chances because of his poor finishing as well. So his shooting was a real letdown for me just in terms of how he played, and it does feel like something that you could boost if you were to look elsewhere other than the dribbling. And that would be my recommendation if you're going to play him at striker. But guys, overall, I think that this card did need a helping hand on the shooting as well. The final thing I want to talk about, guys, is his medium, medium work rates. And he really did struggle with this as well. Sometimes his running was not very good in terms of just getting into the right position, breaking down the line, etc, etc, just to make sure that we create easy chances. I do feel like, of course, again, he did reasonably well up front. And that was really his best position for me as well was that up front slot. In these final couple of clips, guys, you're just gonna see more of the same of what he was able to do, using that pace to get in at the fullback and then try and take them on with that dribbling, those long strides, getting into the gaps there and finishing into the back of that. And then this final one, more of the same, just off the kickoff, taking the ball up the field here, getting a one-two here with Aguero, getting in behind on goal and then smashing it in. So guys, getting to this final summary for Gareth Bale, of course, didn't on the PlayStation 2, 5 on the Xbox and 347 on the PC. Now guys, of course, the key stats of this card, the pace, uh, decent dribbling as well. I do feel like his passing range was better than what's suggested on the card as well. He did really well in terms of crossing too. In terms of the cons of this card, guys, I do feel like his shooting was quite poor, as we mentioned in the clips as well. Uh, he did let me down a number of times with his finishing. His dribbling feels very stiff as well, so you do need to help that out a little bit. In terms of chemistry style, guys, Again, you need to help the agility and reaction. The only one that I saw that helped both of those is the artist. And that is really what you're going to have to go with, guys. You're going to have to leave that finishing alone and boost the other elements of this card because it really does need it. Uh, again, it's lacking in a lot of elements like that Cristiano Ronaldo card. And you do need to boost it a little more to help him out. Uh, in terms of the similar sorts of players, guys, I've just mentioned one there. Cristiano Ronaldo's... Uh, Flashback card is a similar sort of player, I would say. Um, Dejan Kulusevski, again, another bigger winger, that kind of style, that kind of mold of player as well. In terms of linkability, guys, perfect links to Ben Davis, although they are on opposite wings, but perf uh, strong links to uh, other tops players like Harry Kane, Young Min Son, of course, Welsh players like Ryan Giggs, Tangy and Dombali's in there, Joe Hart, Lucas Mora. You can really put some nice links together with this player. Um, so really great options there as well. Leads me into the price comparison, guys, which is down here at 300k, just below this flashback Saul, below this flashback Ronaldo. Uh, I think that him and Ronaldo are in a similar sort of situation in that they both aren't really worth it. Now, you may be looking at this build card thinking that's a lot better than that Ronaldo card, and I would agree with you. Yes, it is. However, guys, this Gareth build does come up short in, on expectations, in my opinion. Uh, if you guys are feeling different, then please do let me know. But I feel like it's, an, it's a bit of a high price for me. Uh, I would like to see him a little lower given that he is only, let's say, 100k less than Buendia, who's a far superior player. If we went to the below here, see Kulazewski sitting around 205k. I think this is the mark where he should be at. Around 200k for me would be a fair price for him, which leads me into the final recommendation about this card, guys, which is I would not be recommending you guys do this card. This is an incredibly expensive card for a card that is 
generally quite average in most of what he does i do feel like his best position is actually striker however guys again you're gonna have to boost the finishing and the dribbling then uh, and ignore other elements of the card uh, which may need help as well so overall guys i think that you, you just need to have a look at how to boost this card the best way you can but for me guys it's not worth it i would be avoiding this spc hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did please do smash that like button until next time i will see you all in a bit